This is Personal Injury Court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of Madison versus Connor. Mr. and Mrs. Madison, it's my understanding that you, Mr. Madison, sustained severe injuries to your eye when a pitchfork destroyed it at an event on Mr. Connor's farm. It's my understanding that you are seeking past medical expenses of $600,000, future medical expenses of $300,000, and pain and suffering for $1.1 million for a total award of $2 million. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And uh, Mr. Connor, your position in this case is that he knew what was going on. This is a freak accident that's not really anybody's fault, but certainly not yours. That's correct. Yes, Your Honor. All right, well, let's get into the legal sauce. Now, you all used to be buddies, right? How long have y'all known each other? Well, we met back in college, Your Honor, and we used to hang out all the time. We had many conversations, and one of those led to charity, and that's how we, we came up with the idea to enter into the barnyard games. Now, barnyard games, what are barnyard games? We modeled this around anything you might find laying around a barnyard. Okay. And we tried to come up with interesting activities to do with those tools. For instance, uh, rake relay and the garden shear toss okay. and pitch ball. You all are throwing tools around? Yes. Okay. And, and you said it's a charity event. Who's the charity for? It's for underprivileged kids. Okay, that's a good thing. Each donor that comes in, they pay a flat fee. Okay. To enter the games, and then 75% goes to the charity, and we keep 25%. And Mr. Connor, you remember these barnyard games that you and Mr. Madison came up with? I thought the charity was a great idea. I mean, it, it's, it always gives back to kids like I grew up. I, I didn't have a whole lot growing up, and, that, and that's what made us come up with it, but I agreed to host it, and it was on my grandfather's land. He's got 100 acres. It's perfect for this kind of event. This your grandfather's farm? It is. I grew up there. I've, I've had a lot of fun there as a child. So tell me what happened on the day you got injured. On the day of the event, a large crowd gathered around, around the pitch ball field. And by pitch ball, what do you mean? Okay, so pitch ball is exactly like baseball, except you use a pitchfork as a bat and a soccer ball as the baseball. Okay, yes. okay. So what happened? On the day of the event, the crowd gathered. They were excited for the game. We started playing. I started pitching the first few pitches. And the defendant here swung at one of those pitches and smacked the ball. The pitchfork vibrated in a way that I had not heard before. It, it made a metal on wood sound that it just didn't sound good. We continued on after I warned him to take it easy again. The second time with him swinging with all his might, like he was going for a home run hit or something. So then that's when the pitchfork actually broke on impact. And then what happens to you? And then I see the end of the pitchfork flying towards my face, and it made impact. I felt the bone crush on impact. I felt the piece of metal slide into my eye socket. Michael, I said I was sorry, and I've tried to help. I'm not trying to Mrs. help. Mr. Connor, you saw this. You saw your buddy get hit in the face with a pitchfork. Yes, I did, and it scared me to death. I thought I killed him. I ran to him immediately. I hollered for them to call 911. I did what I could. I Mr. Tried Madison, to help. you remember him being concerned about you? Your Honor, I was in unbearable pain. I, I didn't know who was screaming. I was, I was bleeding. I couldn't see out of my right eye. Your Honor, there was a conversation prior to the games that day where we had noticed that some of the equipment was older and the defendant had said that he was going to replace the pitchfork. And, and you were there for that conversation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I overheard the whole thing. Look, I, I did say I was going to replace it, and I, I did forget. But I also said that we did not have to play this game. There, there was other games that we could have played, and I did tell him... We could skip it. So, Mr. Madison talked about this sound when you swung the pitchfork and hit the ball. Did you hear that sound? I mean, it scared me to death because the time broke off and it flew into his eye. And I... So, so Mr. Madison, he hears the crack, you hear the crack. Why didn't y'all just stop? Because we had everyone out there, sir, and he had already agreed to take it easy before the game even started. Okay, so, so I reminded Mrs. Him. Madison, you remember him saying, I'll take it easy? Yeah, I absolutely overheard my husband tell him to take it easy, and he said that he would, but he was too busy trying to impress some girl that was in the audience. I wasn't. Well, Mrs. Madison, do you remember Mr. Connor coming to care after his friend? Honestly, I was in such a state of shock seeing my husband collapse on the ground. I thought my husband was dead on the ground this in front of me. This is a freak accident. I did not hurt nobody on purpose. This, this wasn't was a, a freak I accident. I wish this on my worst enemy. This but was not... So you, you were frightened, too. You replaced it. When you saw the pitchfork hit Mr. Madison in the face, you were frightened. 
I thought I killed him. The ball was coming towards me. He threw it. He was smiling. I was smiling. Everybody's having a good time. He threw the ball, and I swung. And as soon as it made contact, I felt the pop. I heard it. And immediately after, I heard everybody scream. It just happened so fast, and I was... It scared me to death, and I ran to him. I didn't know if I killed him or not. I didn't know what happened. So when you swing, that pitchfork comes off the end, it comes flying and hits him in the face. You're at home plate watching this. Yes. So then you run to his I aid. I ran straight to him, and I screamed out. I told him, I said, call 911. Now, you've got a pitchfork here. Was it that kind of pitchfork that you were swinging? It was. On the plasma here, we've got a picture of what looks like the pitchfork. Is that what hit you in the eye, Mr. Madison? Yes, Your Honor. Is that, is that your blood on that uh, pillow there? Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> Next, we have an x-ray. This is your head? Yes, Your Honor. So this pitchfork destroyed your eye. I have lost my eye, Your Honor. That x-ray could make you pretty nauseous, I imagine. Does for me. I can't imagine the pain. Mrs. Madison, I see you cringing. What, what was going through your mind when your husband's lying there with this pitchfork sticking in his eye? Well, my first thought was I didn't even know if he was alive or dead. You can see the length of that. I don't know if it's just in his eye, if it's gone all the way through his skull. I have no idea. Yes, ma'am. I mean, could you even imagine seeing your husband laying on the ground in front of you? For all I knew, I could be at his funeral today instead of yes, here in court. Look, we was all at risk when we played, though, and I tried to help him. I, no one would have been at by risk. His side. How did you try to help him? I did everything I could. I worked and tried to give cash towards the family to help them with the expenses. I did what I could. Mr. To Connor, try to this help. sounds like this breaks your heart too. He's my best friend. We've been through so much together. This is truly a tragedy. <sighs> this truly is not tragedy. my fault. If he was it was best... his idea the whole time. Did you know, Mr. Connor, that this uh, pitchfork was bad? I did, and I told him I would replace it. But I also told him I forgot, and I told him that we could play anything else. What he went to was this is his money maker, and he kept repeating that. He wanted to play for greed. So, Mr. Madison, if you knew that the pitchfork was concerning, why did you continue? Because he had agreed to take it easy, because he had failed to get the new pitchfork. And did you take it easy? I was playing to win. But it wasn't... He wasn't playing to win. He was playing to impress a girl from the audience. I was not impressed. Well, that, listen, listen, guys, that, that touches me. We men have gotten to a lot of <laughs> difficult spots trying to impress a woman, okay? <laughs> Miss Madison, you saw this swing. Yes. How do you characterize it? You would think he was trying to hit it out of Fenway Park. You would think he was playing professional baseball. I was playing for my charity. This is for charity. People had already paid to be there. They weren't going to pay more just because he hit it harder. At the last Barnyard Games, there's not really a winner other than the kids, right? Right? Exactly. Right. How much did you all raise in the first Barnyard game? So 370000 That's real. Congratulations to both of you for doing such a good thing. I've been a Santa for 20 years. Beard, makeup, everything. The kids think I'm a superstar, but I get more out of it than they do. So giving back is very important. Mr. Madison, you have asked this court to award you $600,000 for past medical expenses and $300,000 for future medical expenses. I want to get the doctor in to tell us about your injuries and what we're looking at. So let's get Dr. Neelam Vaughn in. All right, yes, sir. Good day, doctor. How are you? I'm well. How about yourself? Could you state your name for the record? Dr. Neelam Vaughn. Doctor, describe the nature and extent of Mr. Madison's injuries. Well, first, he suffered a traumatic brain injury, but not one where you can't walk or talk or do for yourself, but one where it basically stunned his brain, like a concussion. And secondly, he ruptured his globe of his eye, so he totally lost his vision and has to have the eye removed. You can see how close that pitchfork is all the way here, and your brain is just right there. What are the long-term effects, Doc? Well, there's retraining yourself how to drive, how to walk. There's intimacy issues between he and his wife, and you know, just socially going about with one eye missing, it, it really does affect you. Thank you, doctor. We appreciate you. My you pleasure. are released. Thank you. Mrs. Madison, an injury to a husband is an injury to a family. Tell me how this has been for you as the, as the chief of the family caring for your husband. 
It's been a nightmare. I mean, since day one, obviously he's very disfigured. Um, but it, it's not just the physical parts. Obviously, she said, you know, there's balance issues. There's the fact that he can't do the things that he loves to do anymore. But really, the mental side effects of that are are so much worse. He's depressed. He doesn't want to leave the house except to go to doctor's appointments. I offered for us to reschedule and postpone it. You know, I, until we could have got another pitchfork. I offered for us to play anything else. This whole thing could have been avoided. Exactly, and he pushed and pushed. This is I his moneymaker. Anything, Mr. Your Madison, Honor. were you pushing to get this done this day? Not at all. He had months to I get this new equipment. Said, he had months to get the new equipment. But on the day, on the day of the swing, did you push him despite hearing this pitchfork? I did not wish him. Sound? The only thing I said is I will agree to play if you agree to take it easy because you're using an old pitchfork. Like I was saying, he had months to get the new equipment and he failed to do so. And then on the day of the event, after we have hundreds, almost a thousand donors there, then he tells me he don't have the right equipment. So this happens in front of the donors with yes. hundreds of people there. Yes, after we sent out flyers and posted on social media about this, then he tells me that he failed to do the one job that I gave him. Your Honor, there is only one person at fault here, and it's the defendant for his recklessness. Y'all could have stopped this, right? Exactly. When you heard when he you heard the, the pitchfork make the sound. He was True? the one who swung it. It was not in anyone else's hands. But before he swung it, you, you all could have said, hold on, that made a weird sound, right? We did say we that. We did, and we stopped him. And Mr. Connor, frankly, you heard the sound too. You could have stopped it. that we could play any other game. This is what he wanted to play. He kept saying it's his money maker. That came out of his mouth. That was his word. I was here for the charity. I was here for the children. He was here for the greed and the money. That is what got him hurt. That is a He's desperate plea. He's a victim plea. of his own greed. Whatever. That is it a is desperate plea from a guilty man. I could be on the other side of this. I, I know it's important to you. I, I can see it on your face. Mr. Madison, Mrs. Madison, you all are asking this court for $1.1 million for pain and suffering. Yes. Tell me about that experience. That's a lot of money. From the day that it happened, it's been nothing but trauma. Not just physically, but emotionally. I mean, my wife doesn't even look, doesn't even look at me the same anymore. Your Honor, our entire lives have changed because of this. This is not just medical injuries. He's going to have these for the rest of his life. We were talking about kids, and now that's not even... That's not even a concern right now. What, what's your daily experience like with having one eye? I, I, I can't balance. She has to walk me from place to place. I, I reach for things and I, and I miss them. Like, like, as simple as reaching for a cup of coffee and I'm, and I'm a foot off. And then looking in a mirror and seeing a nasty, empty hole where I used to have a, a nice eye. And you blame your best friend for this? Yes. How about you His negligence about the help is what got us here. Since he's been hurt. Tell me about the help you provided to your I friend. Have, I have given money to help with bills since he currently can't work. He needs errands ran. I try to help. It sounds like he's trying to make a good case for you, yeah. Your Honor. A few hundred dollars towards bills. We have six hundred thousand dollars so accident. far. Mrs. Madison, think about this. What's the biggest change in your husband since he lost his eye? Probably his confidence. Every personal injury case, the plaintiff has to prove three things. The plaintiff has to prove that the defendant was wrong and that the defendant's wrong caused your harm. This was an event that should not have had y'all meet me today. You all thought that swinging the pitchfork was gonna be a safe thing, despite the uh, cracking sound. You thought he was going to take it easy. Even though he told you that he was going to replace it, you knew he didn't replace it. But if he took it easy, this would go fine. Instead, what you all have said is he swung too hard and the top of this pitchfork came off and destroyed your eye and changed your life forever. Mr. Connor, your heart was in the right place. You were concerned about this pitchfork, but not such that you thought it would harm your best friend. I know you didn't intend this. You did this event with Mr. Madison before. You all as buddies have done a great thing. You were playing just like you had played before. But the law does not require people to intend the results of an act. What the law requires is that no one suspend their common sense and that you intend to do the act which causes harm. If that act is reckless, then despite your heart, your relationship, your feelings, the law would hold you responsible. You had the last act in the chain of events 
that caused this injury. Because you swung too hard, I must find against you. I find in favor of the plaintiffs, and I'm going to award you $600,000 for past medical expenses, $300,000 for future medical expenses, and $1.1 million for pain and suffering for a total award of $2 million. That is my final verdict, and this matter is adjourned. This is a premises liability case where you, Mr. Raymond, sustained some pretty severe injuries on Mr. Robinson's property. You're asking this court to make an award for medical bills of $100,000, lost wages of $50,000, and pain and suffering of $100,000 for a total award of $250,000. Is that correct? That's correct, Your Honor. And Mr. Robinson, you believe that Mr. Raymond is responsible for his own injuries in crossing your property, right? Yes, Your Honor, I do. All right. Well, let's get into the legal sauce, gentlemen. Mr. Raymond, tell me how we got here. What led to you going to this property? I'm a licensed uh, plumber. Okay. And I got a call from Mark, um, a very frantic call, asking me to drop what I was doing and come fix this issue. How long have you been a plumber? I've been a plumber uh, for about 20 years. Okay. I've been uh, taking care of this building for about seven. So you've done work for Mr. Robinson before? I have, and uh, he keeps me he keeps me fully employed. Um, I do a really great job. I love what I do. I've been able to make a living for my family for quite a few years now. So, Mr. Robinson, you had an emergency this day. Yes, Your Honor, I did. Basically, what had happened was we had a sewage buildup in the pipeline, and it was starting to overflow through the grass. I was getting many complaints from all the residents. But before uh, this day, he was your plumber. He was the guy that took care of your needs. Yes, Your Honor, about seven years. I mean, he's a good guy. He's, he's done good work, um, other than the fact that I've started to know uh, a lack of performance lately. Okay, so he's kind of your main guy, despite some ticks here and there, but he's your main guy. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Robinson, this property is an apartment building, right? Yes, Your you Honor. You got a bunch of toilets, bunch of sinks, bunch of bathrooms, right? That's correct. Plenty need for a plumber. Mm-hmm. How many units? Units, there's a total of 45 units in the main building. And how long have you owned this building? I've owned this building for the past 12 years. And, Mr. Raymond, what happened on this day? Uh, on this day, I, I got this call. It was an emergency. So I, I dropped what I was doing. I headed straight over there in my truck, my work truck, parked in front of the building. I grabbed my toolbox and I got there. I could see him waving at me. And, at and the, the emergency, Mr. Robinson, was this uh, sewage buildup? Yes, Your Honor. It was mm -hmm. a catastrophe. And, it, and it's something only a plumber could address and absolutely, solve. Absolutely, and immediately. So, Mr. Raymond, you were going over to solve this emergency. Yes, sir. So uh, then what happened? I parked right in front of the building so I could have access to my work vehicle. Yes, sir. I grabbed my toolbox and I started heading straight to him few steps in and my foot went through a hole and I went down, sir. I went down and I was hurt. My shoulder, my side, my ankle. I didn't know what was wrong, but I couldn't get up. Mr. Robinson, did you see this? Yes, Your Honor, I did. Mr. Raymond, what's that hole about? You submitted this photograph. Yeah, so that's... Oh, I'm sorry. So that's the hole that I put my foot through as I was trying to get across to fix this other emergency. Okay, uh, and you, you stepped in through. that hole? Yes, sir. Okay, and that's where I see you've got this boot on your right foot. Is that the foot that went into this I hole? I broke my ankle going in there. I broke my ankle, and so I've got a boot here that's, I can, I can hardly walk, I can't, I can't do much because Now, I see you've got that shoulder apparatus on. What happened to your shoulder? So, I, uh, I, I separated and dislocated the shoulder when I went down. Okay. And then part of that tore my rotator cuff, so I had to have surgery for that. So this was a nasty shoulder. It was, it was a very, very bad, bad hurt, Well, yes. Mr. Robinson, that had to be shocking even to watch. I mean, you see him go down, and he's pretty badly hurt. Were you concerned? At the moment, yeah, but at the same time, Your Honor, this injury was based off pure negligence. How was he responsible? I don't think so. Well, for starters, he walked through the grass, instead of the sidewalk. I mean... Well, what's sidewalk, the harm of walking through the grass? I walked through my grass this morning to get to my car. The thing here is there was a sign in the grass that said, keep off of the grass. Did you see a there, keep off I the grass not, sign? There's no sign there when that's, I was there. That's not true, Your Honor. There, there was a sign right well, there. Well, you remember passed. a sign being there. Yes, Your Honor. I'm the one who put it and in there. And if it was there, you didn't see I it. I did not. I was... I was handling an emergency, and he was standing... For him. For him. I was coming at him. My, my biggest issue is that 
this should never have happened. He's right. This was negligence. It was his negligence. So, Mr. Robinson, <laughs> is this the sign you put up? Yes, Your Honor. This is the sign that I put up. Mr. Raymond, I, I, I can't I, see how you missed that I one. I didn't see it, sir. I was... I, you were focused on his I emergency. Was, he was jumping up and down, waving his arms at me. You didn't expect that he was kind of just gonna lollygag around on the sidewalk and take his own time, right? The sidewalk was two feet from his car door. He chose to walk through well, the Well, you grass. submitted a diagram kind of laying this out. Yes, could, Your Honor, Could you I did. go to the podium? I want you to explain this for me. Because you, you saw the whole thing. Now, okay. where are you? I am right here, just outside the main entrance of our main building. Basically, I made the call first. Okay. And then what happened is, this is a one-way street. All right. This is one way here. He comes this way, and then he parks the vehicle right here. Since the driver's side is on the opposite side of where I am, he walks around the side to get the bag. Okay. I had to grab my and from box. at this point, I am signaling, oh, so I you're, need you. You're not saying come here. You're no, saying, I'm saying go around. I need you. I'm, yes, because I'm trying to wave him in the direction of the apparent sidewalk. That's right next to where he could have walked. So, Mr. Raymond, if he's telling you go around, I mean, I understand that uh, a septic soup in an apartment is not a good thing, but it's not like anybody's gonna die. I understand what he's saying. Okay. But I've worked with him for so many years. Yes, sir. He wasn't saying go around. He was saying hurry up. That hurry up. Get no. over here. Like I, he. And he you were trying to get to him as soon me. as possible. Yeah, he was already frustrated that I wasn't being fast enough, so I was going as fast as I could. So, Mr. Robinson, you can return to the podium. Mr. Raymond, I want you to go over there and you tell me what happened. Use this diagram. Okay, so... Take your time. Thank you, Your Honor. So, so this tell me is what exactly happened. how it was. The, the issue was up here. I could see him waving at me, being frantic. I knew that this was where I was going to have to work. So I wasn't going to drive on the grass and get over there and create more of an issue. So you I didn't left have my, to do my that, truck there. You so park your truck there. You park your truck, uh, and then where do you go? I went straight to him, and that hole happened to be in the way. Now, and, the, and right there in the middle is uh -huh. where that drain hole is that you stepped in. Now, had there been a sign, there what? should have been a sign by the hole. There well, should have been something there to warn. Mr. Robinson has the sign right over there. I did not see that sign. You had to pass did that you? way. It was that, one way. That sign, it, you had that to pass. We just saw, you, you saw the, the sidewalks, right? Yes, the side. Yes, but if I block the sidewalk, Your Honor, then that's going to uh, restrict traffic because I'm going to be working there for a while. It's a one-way road, So I've got a road, park man. where I can Nobody's access my vehicle to get back and forth and, and get the tools that I need. So, but you thought it was an emergency and you need to get to I him right away. I treated it like the emergency that he was letting me know it was. Now, Mr. Robinson, you oh. can see, though, I mean, his heart's in the right place. He's trying to get to your catastrophe right away. You see that? Yes, Your Honor. I saw him up there and he was, he was up there waving. Oh. You can return to the podium. He was waving his arms. It was an emergency and I had... I, I, I treated it like a professional. I went as fast as I could. He's never moved fast a day in his life, Your Honor. But he must have been moving fast enough for you to hire him over and again, right? You said you blew your shoulder out and you broke your ankle. Yes, sir. My, my ankle was, was broken all the way through. Okay. My shoulder was dislocated and I tore my rotator cuff. Well, I see here that you are seeking $100,000 in past medical bills. You had a lot of medical treatment for these injuries. Yes, yes, I did. And I see that you have $50,000 in lost wages. I, I take it this ankle and shoulder don't let you work as a plumber. No, I, I have been off of work. I can't do anything other than just wait and heal right now. Um, so, Mr. Robinson, do you see the position at least that he's in? Uh, no, I don't, Your Honor. Okay. This is Your his Honor. negligence. Just... This is his negligence, Your Honor. Okay. He's been complaining to me for the past year and a half that he has bad knees. So hard luck and move on. He's been using the bad knee excuse forever. So I think that he decided to take it easy on himself because his knees were hurting. I, I, so the, do the so grass the, and avoid the sidewalk right you, there. You Your Honor, let, me, let me show you. The braces that uh, I have. What are you... Uh, let me show you the braces. These oh, are over the okay. counter All right. braces. They're not medical. They're to help me do my job. I'm a plumber. I'm always well, on that my was, knees. That was a little more than I wanted to see, but... But I appreciate you doing that now. I just want to show you so you can see. These are not to help me walk. They're just, I'm, I'm a plumber. I'm on my knees a lot. This gives me support, like a back brace would give me support if I'm lifting. Well, you've just given a whole new meaning to plumber's crack. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> sheriff Matt, if you would let him, uh, let the sheriff help you pull your pants Thank up. Thank you. <laughs> I've got it. Take him one for the team, here. sheriff. <laughs> good. All right, I almost got it right here. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Hold thank you, thank you. You are suing Mr. Robinson for $250,000. Part of that is $100,000 for pain and suffering. Tell me about your pain and suffering. What have you been through? Okay, so this has affected my whole life. My whole life. 24 hours a day, I'm in pain. Now, this didn't used to be. I separated and dislocated the shoulder when I went down. Part of that tore my rotator cuff, so I had to have surgery for that. I'm captain of my bowling team. We were going to nationals, and we had to forfeit because I can't bowl. It's one of the things that I'm good at that I really love doing. I let him all down because of his negligence. My, my biggest issue is that this should never have happened. Mr. Robinson, you can see that this has affected his life, right? Even yes, if you Honor. don't believe it's your fault, you can see it's had an impact yes, on him. Yes, Your Honor. I mean, I bowling, pastimes, even taking a shower takes about two hours. You know, it's, it's hard when you can't even wipe yourself. Well, I would have offered Sheriff Matt to go home with you, but he didn't like pulling your pants off. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you had an opportunity to say something to Mr. Robinson, I mean, you all had a relationship before this. What would you say to him about what you've been through? And Mr. Robinson, I want you to receive it. Mark, I have been working for you. I've been loyal for seven, eight years, something like that. Whenever you need me, you count on me. And I always do it. I may not always get it, as fast as you want, but these things take time. Now I've been injured, and then you're adding insult to that injury. And the biggest thing that I want you to remember here... And receive this. Receive yes. it. Yes, Your Honor. Is that you installed that drain in the first place. I... Mr. Robinson, he installed that drain that yes, he stepped Your Honor. in? Yes, It was a special project that needed a certain amount of focus on it. I knew he could get it done. So I tasked him to do the job. Now, Are you now, telling Mr. me Raymond, you forgot that it was there? Come on now. Let me show you. Now, That's right. I did install that. How's was... he responsible for a drain you put in? Let me show you why. That hole had this on top of it to cover it. This is the safety feature that goes on top of the hole. So when you installed it, you I put that on top. I this, and this is a sign. This is a sign that there's a warning. There's a, something here, don't step on that. Mr. Robinson, do you remember when he installed it and these things were present? Yes, Your Honor, I do. Okay, and so uh, were these things present the day he fell in the hole? No, Your Honor, they were not. Why not? They weren't present because a crew member of the lawn mowing company that he referred me to ran over that same top. So on the day of this fall, those things, that cover and the flag they that Mr. There, Raymond Honor, put in there, was, they weren't there. It happened the day before the incident, Your Honor. Well, why not replace it? Well, I had to... I put the sign down because I didn't have the actual top, like the cover to it, to install. Did the sign keep people off the grass? Your Honor, it actually did. Had you seen that sign, would you have used the sidewalk? I don't no, think I would have because it's not a warning sign. It's more... That sign looked like, I'm trying to grow my grass, please don't kill it by walking on it. It doesn't say you're about to change your whole life because of negligence. He's got a point. You're not buying that, though, are you, Your He's Honor? He's got a point. What does it matter if the grass needs cut or if we got to lay fertilizer or if people like to have picnics out there and we don't want people walking on picnics? It doesn't matter. We yeah. just need the people to know the message on the sign and to not walk on the grass. I think I've heard enough. I'm ready to render my decision. In every personal injury case, the plaintiff must prove three things. The plaintiff must prove that the defendant did something wrong and that wrong caused your injuries. Mr. Raymond, you were clearly injured. You were injured when you stepped into a hole that you didn't remember was there because the cover was missing and the flag was missing. Had they been there, you would have run right around them and solved his problems and you all would not be here today. That's correct, Your Honor. Mr. Robinson, you believe he put the hole there. He should know that. Plus, you got a big sign saying stay off the grass. The sidewalk is 12 to 20 feet away. He could have done that and solved your problem, and we wouldn't be here today. Yes, Your Honor. I mean, there's no way you forget a job that you do. There's well, no that kind of hits that. common sense. 
Yeah. But the but there, the law's beyond common sense. It's pretty technical. And the technical part of the law says that when you are a landowner or a building owner, you have a responsibility to maintain the property. That is, in its safe condition, you keep it safe. The problem I have here is that it was safe when Mr. Raymond put that cover on and put the sign up. But when you knew that your guys had hit it with the lawnmower, now it became a hazard that he wouldn't necessarily know about. I find, Mr. Raymond, that you have proven that Mr. Robinson was wrong in not at least telling you about this hole being there or at least replacing the cap. I find that you have proven that his wrong in not replacing the cap caused your injuries. And in that regard, I'm going to award you $100,000 in medical bills, $50,000 in lost wages, and every single penny of $100,000 for pain and suffering. Your Honor. For a total award of $250,000, I find in your favor and against Mr. Robinson, that is my verdict, and this matter is adjourned. <laughs> Ms. Moore, it's my understanding that you are suing Ms. Ryan for severe injuries that you sustained when you were in her horse stable. Yes, Your Honor. You're asking this court to award you $100,000 for past medicals, $25,000 for future medicals for dental, $7,040 for lost wages, $300,000 for pain and suffering for a total award of $432,040. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Ryan, it's your position that you did nothing wrong. If Ms. Moore was careful, she would not have been injured. This is all her fault. Is that right? That's correct, Your Honor. All right, well, let's get into the legal sauce. Uh, tell me how you ended up at this horse stable. Well, Your Honor, I've been working with horses since I was a little girl. I've worked with my dad, showing horses, training them. At my uncle's farm, we had horses there. And um, there I am on Snowflake when I was about 12. Kind of a life pass. Trained passion. her, yep, yep. I started 15 years ago training and jumping horses, and I went to buy a saddle. A friend of mine said that she had a saddle, Miss Ryan, for sale, so I went over and bought the saddle from her. We got to talk, and she said that she needed some help at her stable, so I volunteered um, Saturdays. I've been there about a month. And Miss Ryan, tell me about your horse stable. How long have you had this? Yes, Your Honor. I've owned the stable for about 20 years, and I also have been around horses all of my life. So, so both of y'all are pretty dedicated horse people. That's me with my yeah. current horse, York. Yep. Okay, York. Yes, Your Honor. Yep. Okay, you all pick good names for your horses. <laughs> well, well, I mean, Thank you. how did this happen? Well, Your Honor, I, was, I had groomed meatloaf and I was walking and I noticed my phone had fallen out of my pocket and I looked back and it was laying on the ground so I went back to pick it up and just as I bent down it startled meatloaf and she sidestepped and kicked me right in the mouth Ooh. and I felt blood filling up my mouth and I had teeth Feel, I was spitting teeth out. It was it was gagging me, and I I fell on the ground, and that's I, I passed out. Yes, that's. Oh. <laughs> that's it. I know it's hard and to I, look at. I passed I passed out, and the next thing I know, I'm in the in the ambulance on the way to the hospital. So you lost a bunch of teeth. I lost seven teeth, Your Honor. It's going to cost five to seven thousand dollars a piece to have them fixed. I'm going through the transplant right now of having the implants done, and they're doing bone grafts. It's just excruciatingly painful. I have to be sedated in order to do that. It's just. It's terrible. I have this mental block of going into the stable now around the horses, and that's that's my livelihood, Your Honor. So, Ms. Moore, I've got to ask this. Uh, you lost a bunch of teeth when uh, Meatloaf kicked you in the face. Yes. Are, are you wearing temporary teeth right now? Yes, they're, they're, they've got a temporary plate set up in there, and it's, it's really difficult to eat. I have problems trying to swallow. I have to eat a lot of soups and just broth and stuff because it's just hard to... I, I can see the chew. pain on your face. I can't chew. Miss Ryan, yes, Meatloaf Ron. kicks Miss Moore. It's your horse stable. Why wouldn't this be your fault? Your Honor, I was working with another horse over at the barn, and I heard a rider scream. I looked up and saw Miss Moore on the ground and Meatloaf right there. I ran over to her and immediately took the reins on Meatloaf and walked her over to another trainer to get her out of the way and to take her to a barn. Well, what do you think happened? Did, did Meatloaf just go crazy? 
No, Your Honor. I don't think Meatloaf went crazy at all. Every rider and trainer knows not to go behind a horse. And Ms. that is not true. Miss um, Moore, you can walk behind a horse if you do you, it properly. Me. The judge asked me a question. Miss Moore already testified she's had years and years of experience with horses. Exactly. And so I know horses. how to walk behind a horse. So she should have known not to go behind a that horse. That is not a rule. And I think what happened Please is. Please respect the process. Okay? Just direct your comments to me. Uh, Your Honor, I think what happened is that she bent down to pick up her phone. That's not... And, um... And you know Meatloaf yourself, thought, as a trainer, you can walk behind me. a horse properly, and it does not react. But you bent well, down well, behind listen the now, horse. I mean, I, maybe that's the general rule. I had a co-worker years ago who walked up to a horse but didn't touch it as she walked from the back. The horse turned and completely destroyed her face. If she scares it, but... I know how to walk behind a horse, and if you know, it's not a rule that you don't walk behind a horse. Not the only rules she, are, not you only know how she, to do it. So yet, if she, you're trained to do it, how how does this happen? Because the horse isn't is a dangerous horse, and I wasn't explaining this. It is not a dangerous this horse, Your when Honor. It is I not. Took over, I've been working with this horse for four weeks, four hours. Right. Why do you call this a knows. horse that you're working with dangerous? Because it's, it's done not. this before. Okay. Two weeks before my incident, Meatloaf kicked another person in the head. But Ms. Moore, is... you've been working with Meatloaf for four weeks, right? Only four That's hours, right, Your Honor. Honor, on Saturday. But don't you get to know the horse? You, yes. you do a little, but you, if you're not told that this horse has a temperament, just training and not. trying it to get to know. It does not have a temperament. Obviously, it does if and we've both been she, hurt. She was I've there. worked with horses Address my me. whole life, and I've never got kicked. Ladies, we're going to have order in this court. Tell me about Meatloaf's personality. Meatloaf Every animal a has great, a personality. Meatloaf is, has a great personality. She is being trained, and that's why Miss Moore was there, to train her. And after four weeks, she should have known what might spook her or not spook her. And the problem is she bent down you behind the horse. You but if, but if Meatloaf is kicking folks... Don't forget, Your Honor, you have to have a respect for a horse. Well, they're very powerful is, animals. That's correct. Yes, and Even, that's why you need to know how to train them, as And I you do. do. And you do, right? Yes. But so tell me about your known. injuries. Not. My injuries, Your Honor, I have facial lacerations, which are going to require plastic surgery, Your Honor. I'm going to have to have seven teeth implanted. That's but a very painful procedure. It is very painful, and it's just a time-consuming. It's going to take months to have this done where I can actually eat. I, You're probably having headaches and everything else. I am having horrible headaches. The pain medication keeps me almost in a lethargic state, and then when I'm not on it, I'm in horrible pain. I see you're I'm asking this court for your lost wages. And, yes, I can't work. I can't work in the state. People think I'm a monster. How are you going to pay these medicals? I can't. You see, Miss Ryan, this is a big deal for her. I understand that, Your Honor. All I'm telling the court is that it wasn't my fault. And it's not my responsibility, and I appreciate that she got hurt, but it's not... You know, you take a risk when you come around horses like I'm that. I want to get this them. right. You knew that Meatloaf had kicked someone else before it kicked Miss Moore. Right, but... Hold on. Court, that is... Yes, Your Honor. Why wouldn't you just tell her, hey, uh, Meatloaf was kicking folks a couple of weeks ago or whenever it was? Well, Meatloaf wasn't really kicking folks, Your Me Honor. Meatloaf, did Meatloaf kick got people. scared. Kicked her right and, in the head. And kicking is a natural reaction for a horse when they get scared or frightened. It is not frightened. a natural reaction. And let me finish. Uh, address horse's me, please. natural reaction is address to flee. Address me, please. Let me finish. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Address me, please. And Your, a horse's natural reaction is to flee. Before you were thing? kicked... Did you know that meatloaf was dangerous? No, no one told it's not me. Not dangerous. If Your I Honor. would have known that, I would have treated this animal much differently. Your Honor, the reason meatloaf did not flee is because they were in a corridor going from one no, building to another, no, and there was another no, horse, no ma'am, coming in, no ma coming toward them. Ms. So no what Miss Moore should have done, excuse me, is taken the reins and pulled Meatloaf around so that Meatloaf could see her when she bent down to Which I would have done if I knew she, she was that. a dangerous animal. She, it, it, Ladies, talk to me. Talk to me. So, Miss Moore, you, you brought a witness with you, Miss Belinda Evans. Yes, sir. Miss Evans, would you stand and come to the podium? Now, you have a bit of a shiner on your head. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Did Meatloaf do that to you? Yes, Your Honor. Tell me about that. I was at the stables that day. My boyfriend and I were there, and he was taking some videos 
um, for social media, and I had decided to take Meatloaf out for some exercise. I had heard some word around the barn that she could be a bit of a handful, but I'd never really had any issues with her, so. Yes, ma'am. So I just took her out and I was walking her. It had snowed the night before, and I slipped on a slippery patch of this icy snow mixture and lost my balance and fell. But as I fell, Meatloaf lashed out to the side directly at me and kicked me Whoa. right in the head. I heard, a, I heard a crack and I didn't know if it was my skull or my helmet. There was blood in my eyes. I didn't know what was going on and it was, it was terrifying. Luckily, my boyfriend was there with me. Now, your boyfriend Helped. caught this and on tape. Yes, didn't he? he actually filmed the entire thing. I brought the video with me to show the court. Now, I want to play it, but I won't do it unless you tell me I can. Are you okay with me playing this tape? Yeah, I just probably won't watch. It's still pretty difficult for me to see, but you can play so that. Okay, we're going to put it up it. on the plasma here. This is you and Meatloaf. Yes. All right. <laughs> That's amazing oh, you were not killed. Miss oh, Ryan, that, that looks like a dangerous horse to me. Your this Honor. This is two weeks before. How is this not your fault? The horse was reacting to being scared, no. and that's oh. a natural reaction no, for a horse. No, as you can see so, in the video. So the way that Meatloaf oh. reacted there, when Meatloaf kicks that hind leg and strikes Miss Evans in the face, that was a fear or, or startle reaction? That's right, Your Honor. No. That's Your right. Honor, and that's that is what not horses a do when they react to no. horse. That, that looked evil. I want to see that again. Your Honor, I, I don't... <laughs> I don't think horses are are evil like a that. A natural <laughs> reaction would have Did been. Did you see for how her to the fly. horse turned and turned, deliberately kicked her? That it turned because it got scared because of her fall, and then if you notice, it ran off. It did not stay in the natural reaction. Ms. Moore would said have been that when a horse is startled, generally, they flee first before an attack. Your Honor, the court has to keep in mind that a horse is big and a horse's hoof is hard and a horse has a shoe on their hoof. You really so could be sued twice by both of these ladies. <laughs> Ms. Ryan, whether that is a startle reaction or a, an angry, evil horse, don't you think you should have told Ms. Moore about it? Your Honor, every rider and every trainer knows when they come into a horse stable, they have to be cautious around the animals. But I you're was. more cautious, wouldn't you think, when you're told two weeks before a horse nearly took a lady's head off, right? Well, yes. I wouldn't characterize it as it, that. Is, your is Honor, that extreme? You wouldn't. Yeah. You wouldn't. Yeah. I mean, you're you're healing, and I well, understand maybe if you, had you got this kicked, on your but forehead, Ms. Moore, you might think about it a little differently. We need to have order. Ms. Moore, if you had known that Meatloaf had kicked Ms. Evans, what would you have done differently? Then I would have led the horse around because I know it's a dangerous animal. Should so always lead the horse if around. If Ms. Ryan had warned you, yes. you would have done things differently and been able to avoid this. Right. Your Honor, every right. horse has the potential to kick. It's not that meatloaf is aggressive or dangerous. I mean, like, but, but all horses aren't dangerous. the same, right? Obviously, we've Pardon? both been yeah. hurt. It, it's similar to an argument about dogs, right? All dogs have teeth and the ability to bite, but only some dogs bite. And if this was a dog that bit somebody two weeks ago, the law says you got to tell folks yes. if they don't know. I, the I, essence of your duty to tell her is she doesn't know what danger she's walking into but you do. I don't know what the law says about my duty when a horse kicks, but yes, being a seasoned trainer, Miss Moore should know that all horses have the propensity to kick. That's typical of horses. That doesn't mean they're vicious. Ladies, I think I've heard what I need to hear. I'm ready to render my decision. <laughs> Folks, in every personal injury case, the plaintiff, you, Miss Moore, you've got to prove three things. You got to prove that Miss Ryan was wrong and that her wrong caused your harm. We need not talk about your harm much to understand that it is beyond proof that you have been chained forever. This should not have turned out this way for you. You've put up evidence in this case that Meatloaf actually nearly killed somebody two weeks before with the same kind of kick. I was nauseous watching that video. But the severity of your injuries isn't the only thing I have to consider. I've got to consider whether Ms. Ryan is legally responsible. And what that does, it calls into play the legal concept of knowledge of the hazard. 
Horses are wild animals. They're not like cats and dogs. They are unpredictable. They're big, powerful animals, but it raises the duty for the owner. If you know that this horse is dangerous, you've got to tell people who are around it because they cannot appreciate the danger unless you warn them. But we don't have the average user, the average person around the horse. We've got a horse trainer, an expert. Clearly, you grew up with horses, you understand horses, but more particularly, you understand this horse because you were working with this horse. That causes me to consider what did you know or what should you have known? Certainly, you have to know that horses kick. You have to know that. What that does, though, is it makes you have the same kind of knowledge that Miss Ryan has. When Meatloaf kicked, that was a violent act. However, it was the act of a wild animal, not necessarily something that's beyond your experience. Here, where you have equal knowledge of the danger, there is no duty to warn because she's not telling you anything you don't already know. And when you have equal knowledge of the danger, the law says Miss Ryan wins. Here, if I could rule based on how I feel, I would give you $10 million. But how I feel is not part of the legal calculus. The legal calculus is when two parties have equal knowledge, the defendant wins. And therefore, I rule in your favor, Miss Ryan, despite how I feel. But the law commands it. That is my final verdict, and this matter is adjourned.